If I found the right words, you, you must remember that I have always earned my living by my pen and by my tongue. <laughs> Churchill Book Collector, specializing in works by and about Sir Winston S. Churchill and collectible works by all authors. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Kurtz of Churchill Book Collector. And today, I don't have a book to show you. Today, it's a magazine. This is a 19, May 1936 edition of Strand Magazine, which normally wouldn't be that exciting, even though it's a pretty impressive survivor. But this is one of the most exciting kind of things we handle, when there's a convocation of authors and famous people in a single item. And this one might be unique, because this magazine, this particular copy, features the signatures of Claire Booth Luce, Winston Churchill and Agatha Christie, and we don't know of any other pr printed items that bear the signature of all three of these 20th century luminaries. The complication of signatures in this copy is remarkable, but so is the timing. Let's we'll start with the signatures. So Claire Booth Luce appended her own personal book plate to the final page of this copy and also signed it below her book plate, and there's her signature. In addition to her book plate, at the head of Agatha Christie's story, which is Poirot and the Triangle at Rhodes, we have her signature. And finally, as if those two wouldn't be enough, we have the signature of Churchill from Winston S. Churchill, 1936, at the head of his own story next to his printed name. Again, these signatures alone in such an item would be remarkable, but, but the timing is really quite extraordinary. Churchill had written an article, The Queen of the Seas, about the Queen Mary. The Queen Mary was arguably the most amazing ship of her time. It was being, uh, and for her launch, uh, Churchill wrote this article. At the time, Churchill wasn't the Churchill we remember in history. Churchill was out of power and out of favor, warning against the Nazi threat, and listened to by pretty much nobody in the government at the time. And here he is writing this article about a ship that's being launched. He has no idea that five short years later, as Prime Minister, he'll be transported up and back across the Atlantic in this very ship, which is converted for wartime use. That's just remarkable to contemplate. Agatha Christie, of course, needs no introduction either. She was already a celebrated writer at the time that this story was published. And Hercule Poirot, who of course is the titular character in this story, was her most famous character, the fastidious Belgian detective who ultimately featured in 33 of her novels, 50 short stories, and even a play. And this particular story, uh, The Triangle at Rhodes, almost uh, and very conveniently dovetails with uh, the nautical theme of Churchill's piece on the Queen Mary. Claire Booth Luce, the third and final signature in this magazine, is no less fascinating a woman than Agatha Christie, and in some ways um, even more dimensional. She was a journalist and a playwright, but she would also become an ambassador and a congresswoman. And so popular and so well-known was she that in 1944, when she was elected to her first term in Congress at the age of 41, a group of newspaper editors actually voted her Woman of the Year. She eclipsed Eleanor Roosevelt, who came in a distant second. In a lot of ways, it should be no surprise that Claire Booth Luce uh, has Churchill's signature. They were longtime friends uh, and were close. Um, she was close to the family in other ways, too, in addition to being known for being accomplished and intelligent. Um, Claire Booth Luce was also known for her affairs and she had a particularly tempestuous one with Churchill's son. Um, but more to the point of this magazine and this publication, Claire Booth became Claire Booth Luce in 1935, the year before this magazine was published, when she married Henry, Henry Luce, who of course founded the Time Life magazine empire. Again, this is just a magazine, but it's a pretty remarkable magazine, signed thus. Um, we doubt, we've never heard of another copy, and I doubt we will, but we also had to dress it up because it's just a magazine which is why we have it in this custom folding chemise. And you'll notice the colors. We couldn't miss the nautical theme of both the Poirot story and Churchill's article on the uh, Queen Mary. And so we have this blue chemise, which nests within this quarter blue Morocco box, which the colors are distinctly oceanic. And it makes for both preservation and a lovely shelf preservation, uh, presentation. What's most remarkable about this, again, are the signatures in this magazine. And it's arguable that the owner, Claire Booth Luce, was the only person in a position of social influence and friendship to be able to secure the signatures of both Agatha Christie and Winston Churchill 
on the same item. And that's why we think this is so special and imagine you'll probably agree. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Visit us at www.churchillbookcollector.com or direct any inquiries to info at churchillbookcollector.com.